we do not like our in God's permissive will. Not in a causative sense. We normally understand a number of things as if God caused them to happen. And we have to say, some things God allowed them, and whatever the Lord allows us, according to 1 Corinthians 10, it says, whatever temptation is overtaking you is not uncommon. Amen. Your brothers around the world, someone else in Brazil, somebody is going through the same. Yes. But God will never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. Yes. And with every temptation, he will make a way or a door of escape. Yes. Like I said on Friday, uh, or the people in Bejway, I'm not sure, but I said something, when, when, a, when a house is on fire, or the ceiling has collapsed, there'll always be dust around and smoke and everything else. Yeah. So the wisest thing is you don't run through the smoke. You know, paramedics can tell you what to tell. People who die from smoke and allergy. They, they, they rise up and they smell the smoke and they never die. They never get burned, actually. Or you find a or maybe they, they ultimately get burned, but the postman can say it's smoke and allergy. And then now because uh, we don't understand these things, we could run on the same world. A person could die from something that was not meant to kill them if they just lay low and allow the smoke to go out in the dust. So you can actually look for a door of escape. That's why buildings very public have got those green things on them that in case of emergency, run there. But it doesn't mean the way some of you do after church. Some of you can't wait to get to get those, those escape doors. <laughs> it's like you're in, in jail. But nonetheless, my point is that um, when we walk with God, there are seasons and people of covenant don't understand the seasons. Or maybe they enter into a season with a lot of preconceptions. They already drew, drew a picture of how God must do it. And when God does it the way they did not expect, and like somebody said, says, all hell breaks loose. They quit on God. Uh, people who have a covenant with God, or people who are working in a covenant with God, do not expect enemies or delays or snares in their paths. They, they think uh, our working with God is more like a Chuck Norris type of thing. You know Chuck Norris? But when Chuck Norris peels onions, it's the onions that cry. <laughs> That's what they say. You know that? So, we expect a Chuck Norris kind of life where things will always work in our favor. Now, let me be honest with you. When you come across a divine delay as a person of God in a covenant, it's also in your favor. When you come against people who would not want to help you in your work with God, it's also in your favor. Yes. God, God sees things before they happen. You know, when we talk about predestination, it simply means God lay your life down, He checked it from beginning to end, then He put you at the beginning. But He knows what's going to happen all the way. So a covenant person walks with the full way out of whether they say yes or no, I go to an interview, they say no, it doesn't mean I'm cursed. Especially when you're black. <laughs> On channel 157, things are happening. <laughs> now this young lady says, says a widow can't put them a pillow in the bedroom because a pillow keeps blockage. So how does some lady face? <laughs> now you, you hear it, but this is appealing stuff to black people. If she can say that to whites or any other nationality, it's that you are the consumers of, of tradition and, and spooky stories. <laughs> you get the point? Now, when you are working with God, you have to be totally surrendered yeah. to Him. Amen. Total surrender. So, for the next two Sundays, today and next two Sundays, I will be speaking just to conclude on the matter about snares and divine delays in the chain of the covenant person. The snares and the divine delays. I have said so many times, you submit a CV, you're excited about it, you get into the taxi, go for an interview, they call you after an interview, the taxi breaks down, 
when you can't reach that place. It may not always be the devil. If you want to see the devil in everything around you, the question should be, what is it that I do that attracts the devil so much in my life? If the devil shows up everywhere and you see him around your life, maybe, dude, you smell good to him. I said it could be a divine delay. God could see the type of job you're going to do, see the snares that are going to be laid up before you, and six months from that interview, you are in jail. <coughs> Think about it. Oh, you get into the taxi, and the devil has so much issues with some people in the taxi. <laughs> and just by Brown Fontaine, he is going to get even with them. And God wants to discount you from that. Yeah. It's a divine delay. Mm -hmm. Now you can't stand there, we have so many times in Jesus' name rebuked the moves of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. in Jesus, back to Sandra and everything else. Now, today let's look at divine delays. Listen to the number of things I've said before we read into we get into the other scriptures. As a covenant person, you are obviously expecting God to move in and around your life, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. We're always expecting God to move in and around our lives. As a matter of fact, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, God was in their midst. Yeah. But a, a, a two weeks, some, some kind of a two weeks journey took 40 years. Where was God during the 40 years? Right there, dealing with some issues. Do you get a point? But there was never at the point where God left them and abandoned them. He was there all the way. So if we are smart enough and we want to get there quicker, we go back to what the Lord said. If you carefully observe what this command is. How if you observe this command, he says if you carefully observe them that I'm giving you today, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, and to hold fast to Him. The best way of getting there quicker and safer. Obey the commands carefully, hold on to God, walk with Him, never leave Him. So that when the rest fall off, you can still go with God. Look, parasites are smart. Parasites are all, but we will have them, you know, some, if, you, if you've got those, uh, uh, back then when we had, a, I used to work for a cosmetic company, uh, we would see people, ladies who had parasites in their head. You remember those pems? Yeah. Greasy, then you keep smearing and combing and parasites, you'd part the head and there would be some residents in the head. How they come, nobody knew. But the best thing about it, they went to every party you went to. You get, well, take this, take this, go with me the parasite. If a dog has fleas or ticks, those fleas or ticks will enjoy the presence of everybody who comes in the presence of the dog. Wherever the dog goes, they get to go. Now we need to develop a parasite mentality, according to the scripture, to stick to God, to cling to Him. So wherever He goes, you're there. Now sticking to God, He won't always walk with you, telling you by the hand. We'll read the scripture today. He said to the Israelites, when I took you from Egypt, I carried you. Even doves, those of you who have owned pigeons, they've got some parasites, flattish and grayish, if you've seen them. Doves are a best symbol of the Holy Spirit. They came down when Jesus was baptized, but they've got parasites. So parasites will choose anything. Choose to be a parasite to God. Stick to God as if you were a boss lace. You know boss lace? Yeah, boss lace. Stick, stick to him. And now some of them that are smarter than the others, when they grow a big uh, abdomen on a dog, you put the abdomen, the head remains, it grows again. They know they can't let go of what makes them alive. 
When and who are you sticking to? Who's killing you day to day? Traditions and everything else. Superstitions. Omens. They'll take you everywhere too. But except where God wants you to go. Now, you are obviously expecting God to move in and around your life. You are looking out for those unique interventions. This is the mentality that is correct for us, for a covenant person. To look, for, to look out for those unique interventions which confirms God's presence. You expect everything to work out in your favor and everyone to treat you as if they were aware of your mission. This is the mentality you arm yourself with. One, you're obviously expecting God to move in and around your life. Two, you're looking out for those unique interventions which confirms God's presence. Three, you expect everything to work out in your favor and everyone to treat you as if they are aware of your mission. Four, you also see some people around you as a possible covenant or destiny helpers. Now imagine the mentality of a covenant person. These are the things we arm ourselves with, the points we arm ourselves with. We are always looking out, God could do something today. Not, well, I'm 32, I don't have children, I don't have to work, I'm not married, I'm giving up. 32! Did you go to school? <laughs> huh? You take an appointment. A person grows up in church. From Sunday school, at 32, they give up on God. They, they say, yes. In gratitude, at 32, if you are uh, in Sunday school, you've been a with God all your life. Now they say nothing has happened. What is it that did not happen? Were you expected to get married at 18? Do you know, on the 28th, I was, separate, I was celebrating 40 years of marriage. Imagine if I got married at 18. I still, still met my mom at 18. At 18, you need your mom, you need your father, you need your... You, you, you need everybody. You need to be taught. This is a, this is a, that's the stage of learning. Yeah. You don't even have to be a parent at that age. Mm -hmm. That's why they distressed. Because there's a trust about our own. So you're always expecting God to move in your own or your, your life. Listen, you are. Looking out for those unique interventions. Could it, no matter how hard the situation is, you expect God to move. If he doesn't move, it's his will. He, he knows you can walk through it. Yeah. Then, if he doesn't move, you sit down. You, you, in, in the book of uh, Psalm 23, it says he prepares a table before me. Before. But in the midst of trials and everything else, when you're expecting him to move and he doesn't move, then you pull out the desk and then you sit down. Then you learn the lesson. But God, what is it that you should learn in this whole thing? Then he'll tell you never to trust them, never to work with them, don't do this, and everything else. You expect everything to work out in your favor, and expect everyone to treat you as if they are aware of your mission. Because if you're going to be there and ignorant, God could send destiny helpers and covenant keepers around you, and you don't even recognize them. Yeah. Or you become the nicest person ever. Yeah. You say hello to everyone. I have said this before. I will continue to say it. You can't expect a marriage and you are a nasty woman. I will listen to man. So I will say hi. <laughs> even Chuck Norris won't marry you. I promise you. You have to see everybody as a, as a prospective covenant and a destiny helper. You be nice to everyone. Now with all this, you have to be aware of God's... Now this is what people don't want. On top of everything, you have to be aware of God's divine and favorable moves and directions. God's divine and unfavorable moves. Like you are trusting God for a pair of shoes and God says take off the shoes you have immediately and give them to somebody. It, it can't be the devil. 
But the man will say, God knows I need shoes. How can you say I must take off the shoes? I mean, that, that's not, maybe, maybe now I had a number, I, I, I had a pair of shoes. Uh, I could always know, but when I grew up, I wanted, how many of you remember the hunter boots model? Like, remember hunter boots? Remember the hunter boots? Yeah. I wished I had hunter boots. They were in fashion when I grew up. I never had them. My father could not afford them. Mm-hmm. I had sworn on the day I grew up, I'm going to buy myself a pair of hunter boots. I grew up. I never bought them. Mm-hmm. Some things in life, mm-hmm. you don't need them. I've been to meetings with, with Tabo where we would, I, would, I, would, I would be sitting there and the, the most wonderful brother would be standing there and ushering us and take, you know, when you go to other churches, you become like boss, you know, they take your Bible. <laughs> don't worry, you're not looking after me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> they take your Bibles. I mean, in the last meeting we attended in Wotladi, I mean, they were putting a train with some, like, you know, like, you're not a quail. Still, national spring water. They put something like uh, some flavored kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh, of course. But I'll stick with you, don't worry. <laughs> So, so you, 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 you see things in that fashion, but now you have to realize that in uh, or above everything else, you have to be aware of those unfavorable moves and directions of God. Things yeah. you do not want to do. Yeah. Things which seem like this can only be the devil. Because God knows the future. Yeah. And this is where most of us fail. When an unfavorable direction comes. When something you, it, which is not in your list comes. We'll talk about that. Yeah. You will not always understand how and why God does some things. Or he wants you to do some things. Yeah. Therefore you must be open to do anything. It's like you're going somewhere... And God says, after the service, Are, take off your wig and give it to this lady. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of stuff underneath that. Will say that, but he can't say it. You could go to this village church, and who knows how many of those uh, money green heads you have in your house with everyone with his own big. And God says, Take this off and give it to the lady, go to the car. This is a Then expose that head that looks like a father's head. And give her the wig. I mean, he was, we've done it so many times. We've left our shoes, we've left our jackets. And we've, you know, no, if I had a wig, I would give it anyway. <laughs> what is it with the wig that is so powerful that God cannot touch it? And then I wonder when you even, when you faint in the world, what's in the world? When they faint, they, they make sure. If a lady faints in a public space, just say, take off the wig. She'll come back, even if she was already in heaven. We have just proven it this morning. They will part with anything. Okay, let's go on. So you will not always understand how and why God does some things, or he wants you to do some things. And you also have to be on the lookout for possible snares at the same time. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 29. We know the scripture. And it says, I know the plans that I have to go Ah, read, read it properly. It doesn't say, you know the plans I have for you. 
He said, I know the plans I have for you. Isn't that wonderful? But now we behave like we know the plans he has for us. Now if somebody says to you, I know the plans I have for you, follow me. You can't be telling them about how long are we going to be there. Yeah. You cannot be bothering him about that. Why this ten? Why that one? Why must we? He says, I know the plans I have for you. It's like you go somewhere, you know, somewhere far. And you go to like somebody who's looking for such and such a place. Then he says, yeah, it's, 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 it's far, but not far. Far, but not not far. About yeah. you, you'll be there. About can I come out? About the trip? About yeah, it's not far. About my fault. About can I go there? You go there, you. But but you trust them, and they they tell you just go straight and never turn until you see a small shop. Five hours later, you see the small shop. A man who could have been misdirecting you. Say, just stay on this road. You'll stay. Because he knows that. He knows that. You've never been there before. But let God just say it. <laughs> when God says, don't answer, keep quiet. Yeah. No, I wouldn't go. No, no, no. It can't be you. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. We've rebuked him so many times in his son's name. Says things that are unfavorable. So he said that. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to me. Oh, okay, so he knows how he's going to prosper us. So we might not necessarily hit the, <coughs> the jackpot or power ball. So if you keep putting the power ball like myself, and you know, you put 10 runs and they give you one run. Maybe that's not God's plans to prosper you. So you can't be going to God and say, Nkononko, say that you power calling a money and you own that. Ubani, I can't find a money and power call. Because he's saying, I know the plans to prosper you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Amen. So what he says, he says, recognize me as uh, the holder of your plans. Then you will come to me and pray. Then I will begin to reveal the plans to you. Amen. You don't come to me already with a list. Now, today's religion and today's preachers of religion have taught us to throw lists. Because they know that's where our appetite is. If we are going to treat church as a restaurant and God as the waiter, there won't be anything on our table every day. We'll walk away empty-handed. Because religion says you can't just go to God to worship. You must go to church because. And everything else that we put on our list are things that God might have never even said anything about. And that is why we want a car, but we need a bed. And we will strive, we will kill. James says if you can't get the car, you will kill to get the car. Things that we need. And things we want. There's a struggle in between every time. When you see somebody frustrated, and the God is not looking my way, and you ask why, they have a whole list of things they wanted while they are sitting with everything they have ever needed. Now, where you at today, if you are where God wants you to be, then you begin to realize how much grace He has put around you. Can yes. I say to you, it takes heaven to put bread on somebody's table. This, it doesn't just happen. Bread doesn't fall from the skies. Heaven stops for a slice of bread to go on your table. For you to pay your bills, heaven, heaven has to stop. Seriously so. Heaven comes to your heart to say, make him able to pay this one. And they get an ungrateful person who says, I have a covenant with God. But they behave. I was talking with uh, with somebody yesterday about uh, uh, yeah, it was quite a very um, interesting topic. We were talking about Jews, Jewish people, Muslims, and Christians. 
Why? Jews and Muslims seem to be making it with God than the Christians. And I said, no one. Jews and Muslims, the sons of Isaac and the sons of Ishmael, their father had a direct covenant with God. And even when God said to Abraham, send Hagar away. Was it Hagar? Yeah. With Ishmael. Yeah. It says in the wilderness, God heard Ishmael's cry. And because he had a covenant with Abraham, he came. And I said, the Jewish people and the Muslim people know their covenant with God. Yeah. And I said to him, that is why now, do you know, I was making an example to this young man, Gilman again. I marvel every time I see it. Traffic up bumper to bumper from Pretoria around, around Midland on either side of the road. When, for as far as your eyes can see, these cars standing still yet idling. You know, I wonder how many liters of petrol are burned just per, as per second. And all of it is what God gave to the sons of Ishmael. Who are not even part, who are part of Abraham's mistake. Mm. Yeah. Put every drop of oil in your engine sump, every petrol, diesel, everything, every car runs on the promise God gave to the Ishmaelites, the Arabs. Then comes the Jews, who are, the, who are so minimum. Yet the wealth of the world, more than half the wealth of the world, is in their hands. Yes. Yes. Then God was talking, look at, I'll use an, a, a, a proper King James Version way. Look what bastards do. Bastard is a child who's adopted. Mm. Then God adopts us through Abraham. But I said, no, an adopted child. No matter how comfortable you make them, they still want their original father. They will eat at your table. They will sleep on your bed. They will ride in your car. Until they grow up and one day they say, who is my real father? And I said, that's exactly how Christians, the adopted ones, came into the picture. They came here and they were adopted and they behave like real pastors. They can't wait. They don't want to even detox from the fact that they are here because their father failed them. Their own father couldn't do anything. He couldn't change their life. But more because Baba But they'll grow up, you'll spend everything on them. God will spend everything on them. Give them the best, the best test ever, and uh, prepare them the best way he knows how. When they make it, they'll go and make an ancestral party. I can cruise on innings, I change the page. same roof and pay their ancestors and put money that is them but couldn't get a scene by you go each one I see you again again and that is why we are the only group that struggles with the same God yet we came to the same covenant Abbasali look on it's in their blood. Yeah. Rona is in the head. Hey. Mm. The 
That's why you, you will never hear anybody accept Christ as what Mary Simnyamus. You seem to say it. No matter how safe they are, they'll buy a gold with a shot of a cool man. Come to check me again. And Barbara Sam must officiate. Now, if I were you, I walk away. No? I can have a No? Or go missing in action. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do Okay, let's go on. But you get the point. But well, this is exactly how we're trying here to give adopted children the rules of the family. They can't wait to go back to their father. What gets surprised me about this period? So funny, come the car and say, "Oh yeah." Or what happened now? I want my father. Who told you you don't belong here? My ass. My ass. Let's go on. As we begin, what's up, man? What's your most and what's his? In Exodus chapter number thirteen, verse seventeen. Now, I said today we're going to look at it. Evangelize. This is what happens. The Lord said, You have to know that look out for God's intervention and everything and everything and everything, but to be prepared for those unfavorable directions, unfavorable moves of God in your life. When you, you, when you can see where you want to go, but God says, Turn this way. But there was this intelligent man who thought that this other guy was stupid, and he said to him, "What is uh, what is far, the moon or the heaven?" This man said, "I can see the moon, but I can't see the heaven." Ah, <laughs> modern gentlemen, you can decide which is far. <laughs> but the moon I can see, the heaven I can't see from here. And if you're going to ask such a stupid question, which is, you know that, if you think the heaven is far. This is the nearest. Show me from there, from here. Now, <laughs> there are things God said in the lives of his own children. Look, he said to Abraham, send the boy away. He did. Did Abraham have to look after Ishmael? Who looked after Ishmael? Are you sure about that? Yes. It's God who looked after Ishmael. It's God who looked after Abraham. It's God who looked after Isaac, Jacob, and everyone else. Who is looking after him? Are you sure? Oh, maybe we should say, who do you think wants to look after him? <laughs> they were the same faith you have today in this place. Imagine if you carried them and you go back to the first scripture where you carefully observe the commands of God. What he commands you, even as an adopted child, is what is commanded to his own children. You are in the same. He made a will for all of you. But the will would probably say, you give this to Khadiso on condition that she does not take it and go back to his father with it. And now because God knows your journey before it started, could it be that God is not allowing you to have those things because he knows where they will lead you next? The same way you bought the first car. I bought the limp in all for this time. I don't know the people, but one about one about a time to have it. I'm not asking you whether you believe it or not. Today is Sunday. I'm telling you, but one of the time you could have a Whether you believe it or not, I don't have a problem with that. No, look at that. He gives you everything, then, but he knows you. Then he will take it to exactly 
were, they never even saw that all their lives. And a, a granny, who, who, who sing a car for the first time? Then it has to drive through some dead roads until it reaches some God-forsaken grave. And how many people know about you because you have to tell them who you are? That is the most frustrating. God says, I have come by my name. I know you. When you are in your mother's room, I put it together. I gave a prophetic life. But with ancestors, I don't really care how long you have lived with a person. They drop dead. You have to reintroduce yourself, John. Together with the crew, Unai. <laughs> but look at the faith you have for that, the patience you have for that, the energy you have for that, the investment you put behind that. Therefore, could it be that the delays in your life, <clears throat> the breakthroughs you're waiting for, as an adopted child, God knows you are not rehabilitated as you. Could it be that you have to come out clean? Come out clean and say, God, I want to belong to your family. I know how many others have said, disappointed you in my family. How they continue to disappoint you. God, I make a covenant to worship you as my only father. You took me from the street, you gave me your own name. I will have no other father. If my real father knocks on my door one day, I will open up and bring him to you. And say, you have to talk to my father. Are you my father? Are you, you have to talk to my father and tell him that you are my father. They never also the matter out. You won't find me, God, one day, sneaking out of the house at night to go stand at the gate with somebody and you say, who's that? And say, that's my real father. That's why God shuts the door and says, go with you. This is where we find ourselves Many times as Christians, we are adopted and we behave as such. And now, now as human beings, when we adopt a kid, we do not know the next move. Therefore, we'll give them everything. That's not when they go and they find a real father. We want to hang ourselves. Really, we give everything for the child. God would not hang in himself. He knows and he withholds it because he knows you can't wait to get hold of it so that you should take it to your death. So God will never hang. You and your father will hang. And that is why Jesus said to them, it is the traditions of your fathers which nullify the power of the prosperity. Look, the Bible does say in the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 5, we have to look after our parents. And if your parent does not have a parent, listen to me, God. If your parent does not have a parent, you have no right looking after your parent's parent. Your parent's parent. When you, you have no right. You have the right to refuse. When your father or your mother drags you and says, let me go and show your parent. And they turn left to go porch. Then they want you to go into the graveyard. But I want to show you where your grandmother is. No. We have an obligation towards our parents and our grandparents when they are alive. You can't look after your parents and look after a whole list of their parents who are not around anymore. That's the natural side of it. The spiritual side of it is when they begin to introduce you to parents which are not all around anymore. Traditions of your fathers. Is it Ecclesiastes 9 5? Some of that? The dead have no share in this world. They have absolutely no share. They can't get angry with anybody. Their desires, their 
will, whatever they wanted to do for you, and they could not do, they will never do. They had no capacity when they were still alive. The day a dead man would bury himself, I would think maybe. Therefore, just drop them. Why are we bury you? It's our business. But let me tell you, I'm Me work was better. I'm tomorrow. It was a magic or something. I'm not dealing with that boy. But I'm just telling you the truth. That's why you will remain in this condition forever. If you find preachers who want to preach what you want to hear, they'll keep you away from. Before she died, she called us and she said, I know you are Christians and I don't want to, to cause you to stumble. Yeah. Yeah. She said that. I don't want to cause you to stumble. I've already bought my own tombstone and everything else. And the day you bury me, put that tombstone and walk away. Yes. 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 Gee, I don't even want you to buy it. Yeah. I mean, you know that? That's it. Some ancestors are smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Maybe next to your grandmother. Maybe next time you go to your grandmother, goes to one. I'm not sure what mama for you. Umgoes would um kinen and um fun is like 1990 when we buried him. Because I am I'm 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 focusing on God. Yeah. And focusing. I don't want to be struggling. I don't want to frills and too many things around me. Yes. Life on its own is grinding without God. Yes. So I can't be taking care of the living and the dead at the same time. Yes. The dead have had their share. Yes. Yes. No longer do they have any other share under the sun. Yes. They can't get angry. They can't do anything. They can't. What they could never bless me with, they went with it. It cannot be my portion anymore. Yes. I'm looking for the blessings of God. Yes. I'm looking for God's intervention. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, sharp, sharp, man. Eh? Let's go to Exodus chapter number 13. Still not forget. Let me show you something quick. It says no verse number 17, Exodus 13. When Pharaoh let the people go, now two things have been mentioned here. Pharaoh let them go. God did not lead them on the road to the Philistine country, though that was shorter. Now let your divine delays not be because you are at fault. That's not joke. Let not God delay because you're stubborn. Rather let it be a delay because God thinks it's good for you. Yeah. They couldn't wait to get there. The Bible says, Pharaoh let them go. But God said, no, you know what? If I let them go through the Philistine country, they will face war and get discouraged. Yeah. So there are things the Lord will never allow you to go through. Yeah. Even though you have people who have gone through them before. Yeah. So if I'm going to go and want to dictate to him, I'm, 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 I'm already for uh, one, uh, I'm shut down. How do you know? If God allowed you to marry, you could be married to the worst person ever. Yeah. You could be praying as I say, would you have a movie? I'll be in that So look what? I have a Friday. <laughs> and look at you now, smiling and carefree. Don't you think God cares about your happiness? Yeah. Until the right time comes. Yeah. And another book, stop pressurizing these kids. Who's who? Yala Nin. It's not Holo Dihin. Kai Kai. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, 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 oh,
politically. Hang in. No. Don't pressurize them. Let God direct them. Amen. I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I'm not going to do it. 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 Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Don't let me go. Let's go. Let's go. For he said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Mm. So God led the people around by the desert road towards the Red Sea. The Israelites went out of Egypt, mark this, ready for battle. Yeah. Yeah. Though they were ready for battle, God said, if they go and face battle, I know they will lose it. Okay. Then they are going to be discouraged. Yeah. So my question when I read this scripture was, Okay, since God knew that he was not going to lead them into any war, why did he allow them to carry the battles with him? The, 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 the battle game. The Bible says we should fight the good fight of faith. Yes. We must always be ready in case we have to fight. Yes. So we have to, you know, Ephesians chapter number 6, the all the armor of God, we should be covered up. But it doesn't mean we're going to fight in every battle. Yes. So that kind of, yeah, yeah. Allowing the Lord to lead. They never lifted up a spear. Mm. Though they had spears. For God said, if they've come out now and they're excited and immediately they face war, they're going to run back to Egypt. Mm. And the whole plan will fall apart. Yeah. So it doesn't mean because you're a covenantal person, you have to fight your way through. Mm. Now the hardest thing is to know when and when not to fight. You know, if you really want to know when and when not to fight, go to the taxi ramp. But only a few marshal. At the end, it's one week. Hosa, 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 hosa. Why am I your utis this one week? You get the point. It's just like that. Udo the French is that. Hey, 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 hey. You could have said it until you couldn't get a vaccine. But you should, you know, you have to get into the battlefield. But listen to your spirit. And you know when not to fight. Some people are not worth fighting because they are not worth your fight. Some people are not worth fighting because God knows they're fretting you out. And He loves you too much to allow you to go into battles. That I want to discourage you. So do not be the kind of person who's ready to fight. If you are a covenantal person, now go with your silence and walking away. It's the greatest response ever. For some time. I mean, you, you, we, we all have people who actually just want to turn us around as if we are, we are, we are, we are, we are putting a horse on the, on, 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 on the bride. They just want to turn around and greet you for no reason. But do you want to fight? No. Not interested. You might spend all your covenant life with God and have never lifted a spear once. But you were armed for battle from day one. For if He is with you, His rod and His staff, they comfort you. And if you know you have to walk through the veil of the shed of death, you will fear no evil, for he is with you. And he's the kind of God, the Bible says, you're not something to pray. He's the kind of God who would prepare a table before you. Why in the middle of a battlefield, he prepares a table. Then you use your spear for the kind of chopsticks. Then you start eating with your spears and everything else and body. Why what can you do? And you go on. And the Lord just says, that's my boy. Amen. Remove the fight mentality. Amen. You know when to fight when you listen. Amen. The best fights I have ever fought were on my knees in the absence of the same enemy. Amen. Amen. I, I, would, I would have people just dissing me all over the place. You know, I'm for this. I'm for this. What is the one thing I'm going on? You've heard these things. Hey. I have people say, you. Man is about 
Ibu tuh orang hal nggak bikin semua rutin dan nggak bikin sana nana. Nggak bikin sana kawan semua rutin. Bahkan di sini kita bangun. Kalau hanya deh. Eh, you and you just go like okay fine, no problem. Then you go back on your knees. For God, in your word, you said people will not peep on you. They can't be batting on me as if at will they cannot. <laughs> he protects you. He shuts them out to the bulls around you. You don't have to respond. You don't have to respond. We have actually had this season which I am in. What is the trash of the things here? No, don't say that. Because I gave you that capability to respond to our market. You will never be in another thing see him. You will walk. I promise you. I remember some time, many years ago, you know, when you didn't go to school long enough, you remember the present art. Most of you who gone to school up to doctorates and everything, you don't remember what happened was on a trip. Now you still remember vividly. We used to read a book, I think it was number three. He had this frog which spoke too much. We, get we, we, this is one. That frog used to speak too much. So there was a pond somewhere, there was, there was a dam, and this frog was a resident in the dam. Too talkative. Then there were swans and every other bird who were the residents around the same dam. Now, there was drought. And the bears could fly away, but the friends of the frog, they had pity on him because though he talks too much, he can't fly. And they said, if we live to die here, would we not be good brothers? So they came up with a plan. They said, you know what? We can give the frog. We have come up with a plan. We're gonna take a stick, bite it in our beaks. You bite the stick and shut your mouth. <laughs> we'll fly over with you. To it. We'll have to let you. And he promised. Put Alshan upon him. Please, we know you talk. This time your life depends on it. Yeah. He said, I, my mom, for me, I'll keep my <laughs> The mission Saturday morning, but I put your house in order, Dog Landa, but to live in the Ludwig. He beat, they took off with him. They went over a small village and the kids started laughing. Do you remember how to change him on that You know what happened? He did exactly what they said he should do. You don't know how it. an explanation to everyone. He opened his mouth mid-air, and the rest is we did not reach the destination. He never reached his Canaan. Sometimes you keep quiet, you know, Actually, I said, I'm going to go to it. Let's keep quiet and walk away. Yes. Covenant people do not have to go around making enemies. Yes. Because God fights our battles. Yes. 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 Are you okay? Yes. So God knew that they were going to face war. They expected war. They were out for war. But he said, you're not going to fight this war, rather take a longer term. I would rather get there later with God than arrive by myself. I told you how many times, many times, how my greatest Consent from the day I walked up the aisle to 
kept saying, I said, Neil, if you protect me, I'll worship you. I had too many enemies. Get knives and guns and everything. So I should, I should know what I'm saying. But when you face war, let God fight. I promise they will make you avoid the same. You don't have to be fighting in everything. There's an amazing story in the book of Nehemiah, chapter number four. Quite an amazing story. Let's just read through this one, then we'll go home, then we'll finish this next week, and uh, the other week, then uh, wrap up. It says here, yeah, Nehemiah, chapter number four. You know the stories are hiding from Nehemiah. He was, um, the walls of Jerusalem, Jerusalem was destroyed basically, Nehemiah was in exile. He was just a wine taste by the king, we were called cup bearers. I had told you the nicest part of the job was that, you know, if they brought wine for the king and everyone else in this case, he would have to taste it first. So nobody could poison the king, they would rather poison Nehemiah. So Nehemiah was always high. What a wonderful job. <laughs> he wasn't. So one day he's sitting there in the palace and one of the Israelites come across and he asked them, how is Jerusalem? They say it's destroyed. It was none of his business. Nehemiah had a good life at the palace. Now this is one other challenge of covenant keepers. When you are enjoying the grace of God, do not forget that some of the children of God, not far from you, have every right to look up to you as a destiny helper. This is where you find people in Jogo refusing to give you anything that won't cost them anything. They will refuse. Because it's you. Something that's not going to cost them anything. Something they will never miss. Kind of some people can open up their, their wardrobes and give and never miss an item. But they will never give it. But that Nehemiah was a different person. He was enjoying the king's presence and everything. He was a privileged person. Some other Israelites were all over the place. Your name was in the king's palace. He was worthy to be in the presence of the king. But his heart was in the right place. Most Christians, your Christianity is up here. Yeah. It's a head thing, not a heart thing. Yeah. How do I know? The Bible says you can tell by their fruits. Yeah. By their fruits you will know them. So they came and he said, how is it going with Jerusalem? The brother said, hey, it's bad. The gates are bent, everything, and he began to intercede. He was never saying, like most of you would say, hey, I'm lucky, I'm hanging on to this. He lucky. He went and he took over a project that was not supposed to be his project. He made this project and God approved it as his project. He says, more verse number, chapter number 4, verse 1, when some brother tried that way, they built the walls. But it's not now. The king gave him everything. You know the story how they, the king just financed the whole thing. Now, some brother had no business with the wall. You know, there are some people who want you to be just the way you are. Start making improvements, start, start being excited. Start walking with God, start coming to church, start having direction, start hearing the Bible, and then a sun that rises. <laughs> if we could, as Christians, realize who the devil is so connected with these people, yes. we would connect with God and the other Christians. Yes. He ridiculed them, he was greatly incensed. 
He says he ridiculed them in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria. He said, what are those people Jews doing? Will they restore the world? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in the day? Who said? Who said any of those things? Do you know what you do? Now go when you are busy with what God wants you to do. Shut up. Keep quiet. Don't give answers to anyone. Yeah. Who oh, told me? Now you're going to church. You hope you find a husband. Keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Say nothing. Walk away. Walk away and shut up. That's it. Focus on what God wants to do in your life. You're sitting here on ground that if it was according to our enemies, this would have never happened. Some of you were here. I never said a word. Never said a word. Dragged from office to office, from kangaroo court to kangaroo court, from party meeting to party meeting, with the authorities right behind those people. Did I say anything? But some battles are not to be shared with other people. Your covenant with God, walk your journey. And when you finish, then you can tell about the hardships of the journey. Yeah. You know why? Because if the devil squeezes you and you confirm it, you will never let go. Sometimes, pastor, the devil must think you are retarded. Are you oppressing and nothing is happening? How much you want to ask about your eyes, Satan? That man is not, he's not normal. We did this, we, we took away everything he had. We did that, he said nothing. Satan, are you sure? But he says nothing. It's like we don't exist. Let his own weapons of discouragement hit back at his own camp. In the realm of the spirit, it's a confirmation. Yes. There was Satan is song. You are waking and an acknowledging. Yes. Let him press every button he has. How about change a little bit? That's the motive. Your attitude is the same until the devil declares you insane. Yeah. That moment, you are wasting your time on this one. Let's go. Hey. You've been pressing him for the whole year. He's saying nothing. Is he even aware of what you're doing here? Let's try next door. This is our Nehemiah 4. Verse number 4. Hear us, our God, for we are despised. But they said to him, he reported to God on his knees. Christians, we can never overemphasize the importance of prayer. Yeah. If you don't pray, you will never know God's will. Yeah. If you don't pray, your voice is never heard on high. If you don't pray, your voice is estranged in the realm of the spirit. If you're not a pink kind of person, the day you pray, it's like you're pressing emergency buttons and God does not have an emergency line. You must be in the habit of praying in season and out of season. When there is nothing wrong, you go to God and say, God, I thank you that there's nothing wrong in this season. I'm enjoying your grace. So that the day there's trouble and you say, God, now they're chasing me. He doesn't say, aha, only when things are not working in your favor. Your voice must be familiar in the realm of the spirit. familiar in the realm of the spirit. Wake up early enough. By every same seven zero, you will start waking at eight. You can estimate, but come on, four, everybody's in bed. Wake up when somebody is asleep and begin to take charge of the realm of the spirit and speak and say, not one person will rise this day and successfully their day. You don't fight them when you see them. They fight when they see you. Fight them in their absence. Fight the spirits that are enabling them. Win the battles. He 
discourage them in the Lord's spirit because the Holy Spirit. So they can't take it. Dismantle the forces of darkness. Make your structures around you to fall as a covenant person. Speak to God when the lines are empty. Then I go everybody knows the visibility is asleep. You don't wait until plans are jammed up now up your car and say, okay, no. take advantage. Wake up at two, pray and go back to bed if you are a person who's a moon, who wants to sleep again. Then you have to go to the moon. But once the lines are empty, take advantage. Speak. Pour your heart out. So Nehemiah spoke and asked God to turn their insults back on their own heads. But when Sanballat, verse number 7, Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, Ammonite, and the people of Ashdod, now the group is increasing. Sanballat is busy, he's, he's campaigning, he's campaigning. He, a simple building of the walls became a racial and a political issue. That's how much time the devil has. I just want to build the walls of my family. I'm just praying God protect my family. I'm just praying God protect my life. I'm just praying God make my children greater than their enemies. I'm just praying not a man in my family would, would, would rise and become an addict or become a drunkard or become a wife abuser. Who am I offending? Nobody. But an arm will rise. An arm will rise. But who will take an entrepreneur of quality? You will not say nothing until you wash yourself Sunday morning, but we are big. This one the mother, ah, this is a word. When you were drinking with them, they never said anything. Walk straight. Come back and say nothing. Those are some mothers and Tobias and Israel. That's crazy and wanting to discourage you. Those walls shall be with you. The more they spoke, then Balak, Tobiah, the Arab, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod had that the repairs of Jerusalem was had gone ahead, and the gaps were being closed. You know, as we speak, you speak to God about your issues, the gaps shall be closed in Jesus' name. Lord, the gaps shall be closed. In the lives of your people. Amen. The gaps shall be closed in my life. Amen. The gaps shall be closed in our spiritual life. They shall be closed in our family life. Amen. The gaps shall be closed in this ministry. The gaps shall be closed in the people of God who are here in this world today Amen. and are desperate. God will say the gaps must be closed and they shall be closed. So we ignore every other talk. We focus on what God wants to do. Amen. As we speak, the gaps have been closed. Yeah. The wars are going on. The world is going on. The obvious opposers is growing. But you know why they're growing? Beyond the world. We are this side. They're growing. As they talk, we keep building and building and shutting them out. In Jesus' name. But we are not of those who give up. We are of those who endure until the very end. We never cast away our confidence in God. For it is a great reward. So whatever they say, you will never be it. Keep building the walls of God. Keep building. Keep building. As they say, you are building, the world is here. You see them. As you keep it, pass it. Pass it, pass it. What? You will only hear their wave. And finally, they, are, they, they can never be seen around you. Because you are a covenant person. Amen. So you can't be stopping work and say, Marundin, if we are, we are building for you, why this discouragement? God would say, how many bricks have they taken? Nothing. Have they taken your tools? Nothing. Then God says, go back to building. Amen. Okay, maybe play some, put some music here. And that's not sure anything in your ears. Then. Listen to something positive. 
This is something I will agree with you. But if you have nothing, ignore them. Choose to focus on the sound of the tools as you be. You keep putting them down, and then this world shall be done. Yes. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you live and die and have nothing to show for it. After all those battles, here we are today. Amen. We fought, we built, the walls are up, that's it. The rest is the shouts of the enemy afar from us. In reality, and even in our lives, we hear the devil's voice from far regarding this project. The project that God has given unto us. They will kill over Today you are sitting in safety with me. I board. And I see. Uh, if we had listened to the enemies, this church would not be here. You are sitting on a miracle. You cannot afford this. You cannot. It's not right for you to sit here where there was faith and, and resilience and prayer and hard work and, and trust and everything and they had nobody. Then the devil stands and says, look at him. He fought. He did everything. God made him to build this. But look at who comes out of here. And he says, he's built all of this and for nobody. Look like a soldier. They ended up Thank you, Lord. almost doing what the devil wanted them to do. They ended up fighting. Oh, they ended up almost fighting. Two weapons. But Nehemiah, because he has from God, I'm not. Let's keep the weapon in case. The work became slower because now the builders were working slowly with one hand. Never stop doing what God wants you to do. They could have left the world, went out and fought, and those nations would be powerful than them. The nations would have just opened up the target was not at least Nehemiah. They were not with Sunema. They were with Sibon. People are so lousy. They were going to ignore them and break the world. Why was the flat behind the foot? They didn't want to kill them. They wanted to, to, to kill their vision. They wanted to discourage them. Yeah. They are not against killing you. If the devil kills you, he no longer has an opposition. Yeah. No when you die, your name is completely forgotten. The devil will never uh, harass you anymore. He wants you alive now. You would have been a poor Lord. So they would have broken this wall to discourage them and continue. I got a foot from scratch, discourage them. But my other, I will see one of them. Build the wall and build it strong. Yes. A very sad story in the book of Exodus 19. In the desert, they are almost getting there. They came to the desert of Sinai. Moses says the following words. Make sure that's 19 verse number 1. On the third day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on that very day they came to the desert of Sinai after they set out from Britain. They entered the desert of Sinai and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him. From the mountain said, This is what you have to say to the descendants of Jacob, 
and what you have to tell the people of Israel. You yourself have seen what I did with Egypt. Now I carry you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. And he repeats, now if you obey me and fully keep my commands, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And they continue to travel. Then they meet some king in the book of Numbers. They meet a king. All they were asking for was, no. It's like, you know, you see where the gate is, no? Somebody at Ari doesn't tell him about who would be like. Then I didn't know who would be like, and it's not easy, but still, as a fool. They were never. I'm a good luck, and I'm a good luck, and I'm a good luck, and I'm a good luck. It will embitter you or discourage you. But the side God encourages you before you meet the discouragement. He told Moses that the thing that I carried you. You never reach this far by yourself. Acknowledge that you might know. In my family, in my generation, in my father's house, in my grandfather's house, I could be the first to reach this milestone. I could be the first to be in a family, in a marriage that is working, in a family that has food, in a family that has no wars and everything else. I acknowledge that. And when you do that, you become the kind of person Oh, son, you know, when people refuse to help you, it means nothing. He said, you will be my treasured possession out of all nations. Now, the most discouraging thing would be for you to expect people who are against you to know what God says about you. God told you. He never told them. If God says you're a great woman, if the angel says, Oh, hey, you're a great woman of God, and you walk past the world's and somebody about how much is that normal? Yeah. <laughs> and you get angry. You need to check up from the left up. God never told anybody. He told you. If you're someone saying that I'm not down to none. You all know what it was. God told you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You look at this. I don't have to do what God told you. So you don't take that the matter with God. God said, you know, that's uncalled on. Whose word do you believe? You will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This report says, you know. Yeah. This report says, I'm strong. Amen. This report says, I'm naked in this life. This report says, the enemies that Egyptians have seen today, I will never see them tomorrow. Yeah. You never told me to the Egyptians. So when the Egyptians appear, I have no problem. I'm a white man. Who's the enemy? Yeah. So I just look at them and I smile and say, they don't know. They're going to be here tomorrow. Who are not mostly uh, Mapaban? I'm getting to the Laksas. Where it was a summer in the street. Then I'm going to bring places with God. So you do not get frustrated by people who don't know what God has told you. And in Amos chapter number 20, verse 14, they reached a place called Kadesh. When Moses said, Message was from verse 14 to Kadesh, the king of Edom, saying, Now look at how Moses tries to become persuasive. He tells this man about his testimony before he puts the request. Oh, Jacob, that's so easy. It was not easy. We came here and we are here by the grace of God. Can you please?
What about the Israelites? Go to him and tell them, this is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that have come upon us. Our ancestors went out into Egypt and we lived there many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our ancestors. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, the town on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through any field of vineyard or drink water from anywhere. We will travel along the king's highway here and not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed through your territory. In block letters I have written, some people don't care and are not moved really by the obvious presence of God around your hand. They're okay. I want to know what see. They will refuse to help you, even with God will cause them nothing. Moses said, if our animals or anything, take anything, we'll pay for it. See, if they don't do that, no. I don't care. Not part of it. Okay. Let's go back to verse 18. You may not pass through here if you try. We will march out against you with the sword. Then the Israelites replied, the messengers, they think he didn't hear what they said. He had very well. They said, we will not go along the main road, and if our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. We only want to pass through on food. Nothing else. Again, he answered, you may not pass through. Then Eon came out against them with a large and a powerful army, Nje Mogutin, by Kerukuna. Since Eon refused to let them go through their territory, Israel turned away from them. Now, this is something now that learn to thank God that some people are not part of your covenant with God. Because if they become, you will be indebted to them for the rest of your life. They will have passed that Eon. They were going to be in their territory in for the rest of their life. Yeah. This is when your brother has two or four cars and he walk and he won't even look at you. And the next thing you hear, he gave the car to his brother and he walk. And those news will reach you faster than anything else. Yeah. Oh, the he took a car, he would be good day. Yeah, it was bad, bad. It was not good. You can have a piece, but you know. Yes. Yes. Common person does not look people on their hands. You look them in the face. You look at God's hands. It's His hand which provides for them. Yeah. So you must never be discouraged. That's them. Lord, help us that we may walk and reach our destiny. Help us, Lord, that we may never forget where you have taken us from. Truth is, Lord, we look back and we realize that we see you on the shelf that our fathers lived all lifetime, died and they never said here. We have been raised we hear the words our fathers never heard. We hear it around the generation our fathers never heard. We hear it in prophecies and covenants our fathers never heard. Which means for you to realize that you are up to something with God. You realize that you is up to something. He wants to do something in your life. Something is never ever done, ever. Ever. In our generation. And if we miss him, we will lie next to our fathers in their graves and we will feel the same day they feel. Here we go. So missing God is not an option, especially in this generation. We have to find him this way. The mistake we always do is to look at ourselves 
and count our days according to the time table that we pass. What the world can do. According to the world, some things will never ever happen in your life because of your age, according to the world. But as you say, if my ways are not your ways, my life is your ways. My thoughts are better than your thoughts. See that? So he's got a covenant person. Your vocabulary, your calendar, your everything is in God's hands. You look at the times and the season of God. You throw the directions of God. You have the mentality of God. And realize this one thing. God can do what he's never done before. I would like us to just to engage in a, in a few minutes of, of prayer. Just three minutes. When we pray like after we say amen, what are we talking about? When we thank God for how far He has taken us. When we consciously acknowledge Him. Hurry. The food we have in our home. There is somebody somewhere who has never had it. Well, well, like I said some last week, some people when they have to ask God and they have to come to the chase, they'll simply say, God, make me like this person, present it to you. Not knowing how frustrated you are. What do we have to acknowledge and say to him? Make us part of the, the journey. That it sold us out of every form. Of unnecessary problems. When we have to confess to God and say, We will give up the mentality that I've got with kids. We are aware, God, about the other two brothers that we found in this house. But in your eyes, we're not different from them. It is ourselves that we see different from them. He is not to walk away from you. Where you say with him from today, I want to be a covenant child of this house. The house of God, not the church, but the house of God. Not the same time and the family of God. Change your behavior, change your mentality. Behave like a child who has gone out into the wilderness. You know, this children are very just one thing that his father took her out into the offering. Look at many behaviors. They choose one out of many. God chose you because he loved you. So let's take 90 seconds. I don't know how to do it. One half minute. But let's just go for three minutes to get. Where you let out and speak to God about your condition. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we stand before your throne this morning. 